Hey guys, it's Mark from North 7 Outdoors. Welcome back to another episode. This week we've got the final, the uh, the classic for all the marvels, for the belts, for the trophies, for the prizes, for the notoriety, everything. Fame and fortune went down that weekend uh, in this episode, the classic of the Gold Bass series. So we start off with day number one was sturgeon, day number two was pigeon. Never fished either of these lakes. Lionel has fished them a few times. So the fall, this fall has largely been, I would say, emphasized by large cold fronts and lots of wind. It's probably been the worst fall for fishing I've had that I can remember. Uh, but that being said, you know, we hit up uh, a sturgeon lake there. It was cold, but the wind was, was pretty bearable. So uh, Lionel had been there, my tournament partner, a few times. He's from Toronto. A lot of the GTA guys uh, go to the Kawarthas somewhat regularly because it's not really far of a drive so we decided to fish a, a weed mat off of uh, an island no luck there you know it's a community spot everything about the Kawartha's all the Kawartha lakes is offshore pretty much and community spots but here's the exception so we did hit a bank that was a rocky bank and we we hit quite a large stretch of it probably 500 yards or so in a 200 yard section of this we uh we kept getting uh, like a small mouth every time we made a pass. So here are some clips from that. Alrighty, that sounds like a 14 and change into here. Maybe, maybe 14. Alright, on the board. Alright, number three, found a good stretch here. Oh, you are, it's warm to the touch. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. A lot of water, 58 degrees, so you going to be warmer than the, than the air temperature. Yep, absolutely. Alright, number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, open up your yeah. A decent smallie. Time for some surgery. Yep. Oh, yes, yes. All right, four down. Lionel caught his fish on a, a jerk bait, I believe. I was using, I think, a wacky worm, maybe a Ned Rig or a drop shot. Probably one of those combos is where I caught mine. So we had two and two, uh, four smallmouth for about eight and a half pounds. Then we went fishing all over the, the map again to community holes and offshore places. Um, every time in the Kawarthas, like in Sturgeon Lake and, and Pigeon Lake as well, like as soon as you're on like the shore, it's like two feet deep. And you're like, man, there's like, I wish I could get there, but it's so shallow it's pointless. So everything's offshore and everything's a community spot. So Sturgeon Lake, uh, we fished all over the map uh, there after that shoreline ran dry and uh, no luck I caught one like horribly parasitic infested perch that was like more parasites than perch and uh, and our tournament director Matt he had outboard problems so Lionel's like hey let's go look for him make sure he's okay because the wind had picked up in the afternoon and he just had a trolling motor as far as we knew but we couldn't find him so he was on his own good luck to him I'm sure he'll be fine um, so we're driving around the weigh-in area and we see a spot on the fish finder and it's a, a 10 foot depth circle surrounded by 5 foot depth and then we decide hey let's go fish that I guess some depth change is always good for fish so I'm throwing a drop shot out there and really at this point maybe like a half hour maybe 45 minutes till the tournament is uh, is done. We have to go weigh in, and I hooked into this guy. That's how it's done, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be pushing for right on the top of the mouth, barely hooked. The old KVD dream shot, miracle, miracle fish fish there. I think he might be over four pounds. <laughs> Look at the belly on that thing. Just an absolute stud. All right, one more, and we uh, 
That's five. Yeah, a couple more like that, and we're we sitting pretty good. You know what? We uh, we struggled and we worked hard, and now we've been rewarded with a four plus pound smallmouth. <laughs> and we didn't turn into Baptiste Lake where we got four. <laughs> I'm glad. Good call, Lionel. <laughs> Glad I finally got one bigger than 14 inches. <laughs> oh man, that is a big smallmouth. <laughs> yep, I do not catch a lot of big smallmouth being Canadian Shield lakes. They all go down 80 feet when they get like that big. Like it's very rare that I catch a, a fish like that. So that guy did not put up much of a fight. I figured he was about four pounds. He actually turned in to be about 4.4 pounds even. We weighed him in and guess what? He was the big fish of the day. Except someone weighed in a 4.40 smallmouth. So we had to split the winnings. But I guess things could be worse. You could you know, not weigh in uh, a tied big fish and not collect any money. So we're, uh, we weighed in 13 pounds for five smallmouth. The good news is second place only weighed in like 13 and a half pounds and first place was only like 14 and a half pounds. So after one day, we are one and a half pounds behind. I'm like, oh my God, like that's nothing. Like that's, that's crazy. Like that's not a huge deficit. So I'm like super excited. And Lionel's like, Pigeon, I probably know Pigeon the best. He's like, it's probably my home lake. And I'm like, okay. Like in my mind, home lake for me is like Limerick. So I'm like, we're going to Limerick. I'm like, I guarantee you'll get 12 pounds if things go well, I only have 18 pounds, but we're gonna get 12 pounds. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, we already have 12. So I'm like, all we have to do is get like one or two kickers and we'll weigh in like 17, 18 pounds. I'm like, okay, it, it could be done, but hey, we can at least, we might be able to finish in the money. So day two that comes along, Pigeon Lake, and uh, it was an unfortunate grind. I caught two largemouth bass that were very lethargic. Yeah. It's gotta be 12. Wanna get a board? Sure, might as well. I think it's smally. I guess it's gotta be at least 13 change. Oh yeah, it's 13 a little bit. Alright, one down. I was just about to say, I thought they get frustrated. Yes. I'm going to say 11. Hmm? I said, I'm going to say 11, but he's it's going to be a close one. Alright. Should bump board underneath the container. When in doubt, just start throwing a wacky worm in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I don't think he's 12. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a line like burner. He's a solid 12 and a quarter. A Ned rig and, uh, and just fan casting a wacky worm out of sheer boredom. And fish were just, oh, not good that day. But, unfortunately... Uh, everyone else had a, an amazing day, so we went from like 3rd to like 14th, like to the bottom of the pack. Uh, but that's fishing, you know, it's up and down. Well guys, one thing I learned this year is maybe I should have stuck to my strengths instead of fishing like norms. Like I spent a lot of times fishing a spinnerbait, a thunder cricket. A uh, Mega Bass Vision 110 jerkbait, a Whopper Plopper for some fall giant smallmouth, and nothing panned out. But if you think about it, a spinnerbait, vibrating jig, and a jerkbait, and a Whopper Plopper for your massive bites are, are really like your fall pattern. And uh, it just didn't pan out. And I'm thinking maybe I would have had better time if I stuck to what I'm very comfortable with, which is your Ned Rig, your Drop Shot, and your Wacky Worm. Um, and you think about it that way, 
that's where all my success came from anyway. So maybe I should have just stuck with that the whole day and did what I thought or what I had confidence in rather than what, uh, what, you know, the textbooks say I should have done. But anyways, um, you know, this year we had our ups and downs for sure. At the end of the day, we made money in two events. We fished six of them. So a third of the time we, uh, made money in tournaments and that's not bad for sure. I've, uh, not hit my peak yet, so we've got a few years to hit my peak. So, what I've heard a lot, a lot of times is people are like, "Oh, you know, I don't have a, a really big boat. I don't have a, you know, top of the line bass boat. That's uh, the difference." And I'm gonna say it's not the difference. It's funny how people never want to like accept their failures in life, not just fishing, but in, in general. And I always look at fishing the same way. Uh, when people are like, oh, there's no fish in that lake, or that guy has a much better boat than me. And it's like, well, why list off things that you can't change, right? Like, why not say you didn't catch any fish because you sucked? And you're like, I'm not here to insult you, but if you take ownership of the fact that you didn't do bad, well, that's great, because you can change that. You can work harder. You can be like, okay, that sucked. I'm going to work harder, and I'm not going to have this experience again. If there's no fish in the lake, well, it doesn't matter how hard you work, you're not going to catch any fish. If, if it's because you don't have a nice boat, then, you know, well, you're never going to have a nice boat because they cost too much money, so why even fish? But, yeah, so I've heard some, you know, just some people, they're like, I don't have a nice boat. And it's like, well, I've kicked the snarl of people with a $100,000 bass boat. And people with a 14-foot aluminum and a 9.9 have kicked the snot out of me. Why? Because I'm a better fisher than some people, and some people are better fisher than, than me. But largely, unless you're fishing the Elite Series or the MLF or the FLW or like the Bassmaster Opens and fishing like, you know, two, three hundred boat tournaments and people that are making a career out of this, you don't need the greatest uh, and latest. The reality is the more time you spend on the water is going to dictate the more times you're going to do better in tournaments. So, yeah, I'm going to, I hope. Next year, I spend as much time in the water as I did this year. I mean, you get better and better. But I don't need, you know, a, a 22-foot Ranger and $100,000 in electronics and graphs and talons and all that stuff. That's not really going to help me get better. Time on the water and understanding the water. And I'm going to be so much more critical about how I fish next year when I'm not fishing tournaments. There's a lot of things I took away from the Kawarthas, even though I didn't really care for the Kawarthas. Um, everything's offshore, everything's a community spot, but I'm going to start fishing offshore next year, I think a lot more and be productive or at least keep that in my back pocket and, uh, be able to adapt better. Cause there's a lot of things, even in my lake, even though I don't fish these spots heavily, I may reconsider that next year and look at much more critically about how to fish these spots and become more productive. Anyways, that's my, my rant for this video. That was it. Uh, Black Friday unboxing coming soon. That was my year, you know. I had fun, you know. A lot of people didn't get to do what they want to this year with COVID. I did. So I'm thankful for that. And thank you guys for watching. And uh, be safe. And enjoy your holidays. And I might be back in like two days. So thank you guys for watching. And see you soon. Bye.